All right, today we're here to talk about Wing Chun's core objectives, and I'm going to share with you some of the basics of Wing Chun so that we put it all together and you can see how broad and how deep Wing Chun is. It doesn't matter catching a lot of techniques, but just concentrating on a few, but then going very deeply with them, applying them and in application and usage. My name is Robert Chu, and I'm here in uh, Los Angeles, and I teach Wing Chun in a private uh, group in Los Angeles Chinatown. I'm going to be joined with uh, my partner here, Rafi the Ravager Kevorkian. Uh, and uh, we're going to show this to you today. Thank you. All right, Wing Chun has uh, got uh, three basic maneuvers. They call Pak Sao, Lap Sao, and Tan Sao. All right, but in actuality, they're like going through a door. You push through a door, you grab a door and pull it open, and then finally you might, hey, hold that door, wedge the door for yourself. And so that's the idea behind those three. <clears throat> First we're gonna do Pak Sao, and in its standard form, the classical form, okay? In the classical form, we stand at the Bai Zhong position, and then we just uh, step in and do a basic drill and he does it to me and I do it to him and we go back and forth and this is a basic drill, Pak Sao. But I, what I want to do is ex explain the idea behind it. So this is like pushing a door uh, rather than just giving and taking, the, doing it as the classical drill. So as pushing a door, we're going to have Rafi, he's going to strike at me and then I'm going to show you how I catch him. All right, so he, catch, he strikes at me, boom. Okay, I hit the hand. When I hit the hand, I feel, boom, I can step in. This is how I get in my base. My whole body comes in, I rush in, I control him. I don't chase his hands. What I want to do is just give him a distraction. All right, second one is, I come in, right against his wrist, I come in. All right, again, at his wrist, I come in and strike him. Okay, next one, at his bridge. Bridge is what Chinese people say, it's actually between the wrist and the elbow. So most of the maneuvers in Wing Chun are against the opponent's bridge hand. Okay, that's in the classical way of doing it. In the application way, actually we have many more. So I'm gonna share with that, share more of that. Okay, so again the bridge, and then it's the elbow, or just above, just below the elbow, okay? And that is the crook here, right below his elbow, okay, that you want to aim at and then strike, okay. Then I want to go right at the elbow, okay. Notice how Rafi's body is starting to turn. As I keep hitting him, my, if I just aim at the end part, his body doesn't turn as much unless he's a solid unit. But when I hit him here, start controlling his elbow and his bridge, his body starts to turn, which leaves him open for a wide range of different shots in Wing Chun. Okay, and so that's what the rest of the system is for. All right, so the idea is to get to break his structure so that he's no longer facing you and that you're able to uh, take advantage of that. Okay, so we continue from the elbow, okay, from the elbow pakta, okay, to above the elbow pakta, okay, again the turn, okay, and then the biceps and triceps pakta, and then we see. He comes in, the shoulder pak da. Now you see, I progressively take, start taking his side and his back automatically. And you see my stance here is here to collapse his stance or to break in and dislodge him. When I make him off balance, it's easy for me to take advantage of him. See, Wing Chun is a matter of, I take the opponent's balance. I control his center of gravity, right? When I control his center of gravity, he has two opponents then. All right. Actually, he'll have three opponents. First opponent is what? Uh, the timing. I smashed his timing, so he's messed up. Number two, he's lost his center of balance, his center of gravity, so he's got to try to regain it. Number three, he has pain. Because I caused him pain, his mind is distracted. Okay? If I continue with Paxo from the shoulder, okay, then I can also do Paxo against different parts of the body. See? So, boom! I strike him in the back. All right, or pock, bam, to his ear, and then strike him. Okay, so it doesn't have to be fixed in that way. You understand, this is just pushing the door open. Okay, so that's the first point that I'd like to share today. So the next one is you come up to a door, and the next thing is you grab a door and you pull the door. 
So that's embodied in Wing Chun's Lop Sao. All right. What I show you today is not just Wing Chun. It's every system of martial arts, right? Whether it's karate or it's other systems of Kung Fu, maybe it's Hong Ga, maybe it's white eyebrow or white crane or other systems, right, that are different. Basically, a person tries to attack you, all right, they're like a door. So if they're like a door, you push the door, you, you pull the door, or you wedge the door. It's very simple, right? Sometimes it's a revolving door, you go through it, right? Sometimes it's another type of door which opens up, so you have to have timing to walk through it. So it's the same thing. Everything is the same. In fact, the ancient Chinese, they call this the gate theory, or mun, right? So you have to talk about how to get into the mun, right? Yap mun. Right? That's the, the Cantonese way of saying it, right? Enter the gate or enter the door. So this is very common. So we'll focus right now on what we call lap sao, grabbing hand, and pulling hand, so that I show you how we get into the door. Okay. Again, so in the classical sense, we do the drill, and Rafi's in bai jong, I'm in bai jong, so then I do lap and punch, and then he does lap and punch, and then I do lap and punch, he does lop and punch, he does lop and punch again, lop and punch. Or we do bang sao lap da drill, okay? Bang sao lap da, basic drill, okay? And, okay, so if Rafi is uh, giving me bang sao and the lop, and then I'm doing bang sao and lop. So this is our basic drill. He may switch stances in the front, and then I do the same thing, right? I could be in the parallel stance, or I could be in a forward stance in the traditional way, right? I might be in the side stance also, okay? We have many drills and variations of it. This is just a, a, a basic drill right now, okay? All right, so, but in application, Lop Sao is free, right? So, he might strike me, right? Then I just lop his, between his hand and his wrist. Another one might be, he, does, he punches at me, I do lop, and then I punch him, punch him in the face, but I grab his wrist. Another type of lop is I grab his forearm or his bridge area and strike him. And then I grab just below his elbow, and then I can grab at his elbow, and I can grab above his elbow, uh, or I can grab at his biceps and triceps. Notice. Again, I turn him parallel, uh, perpendicular to me. He's no longer facing me in the same way. And how much of him is exposed? I can strike him with what? My head, I can strike him with my elbow, shoulder, knees, right? Hips, I can strike him with my buttocks, right? It's all open, because why? I've opened the door for him. He's no longer in control, right? And then I'm able to take advantage of him, bounce him out because I use the whole power of my body, not just my arm to grab him, okay? So in using the power of the body, I have to use the waist, the stance, the hand movement, the breathing, the intention, and then I have to know where am I taking him, okay? He punches me, I don't yield and then try to grab him. No, what I need to do is I need to have good structure, face into him so that I turn him. Then I can land my blows as I choose. All right. I can also grab his biceps and then squeeze his biceps and strike him at the same time. All right. This is hidden chin na technique. Feng Siu Ching, of, uh, Yin, one of Yin Kei San's teachers, he's very good at chin na. They call him eagle claw. Okay. So a lot of people talk about chin na and Wing Chun. Actually, Wing Chun doesn't have chin na per se, like joint locks. Uh, what we do is we have this grabbing hand, but this can be used to seize tendons and displace bones, seal the breath, right? These are the typical martial arts maneuvers in the Chinese martial arts, right? It's not to say that Wing Chun has joint locks and is a specialty like Jiu Jitsu or Aikido or anything like that, but it can easily lead you into this type of study from striking and contact close quarters to then joint locks, throws, manipulations, arm bars, and the like, okay? So we continue on, I grab Rafi, in the shoulder, okay, in the deltoid muscle, and strike him, right? Or I can grab Rafi behind the neck, pull him in and strike him. Or I can switch the angle of my grab and pull him in and strike him. Notice the control I have on his body. His body is broken structure. This is what we mean by broken structure. 
when his center of gravity is off, he's going to try to regain it. Now, Rafi's trying to want to get up, so I send him off. Okay, he's flying, because why? I know, his body goes down, he wants to come up, so then I use my, his energy to guide him upward. Right? Similarly, if I pull him to one side, he's going to want to recover. Right? If he wants to recover, then I let him and go with him. This is the epitome of the Chinese martial arts. I borrow your force, I guide your force, I take your force, right? I use your force against you, right? This is the softness overcomes the hardness. And this is what's embodied in the Chinese martial arts. Okay? So this is basically the idea behind Lao Tzu. Anyway, the next one we're going to talk about is the Tan Da. Tan Da is the wedging hand. Tan means to spread or disperse. In the form it comes out, you come out and the whole body moves behind it, right? It doesn't just come out with the hand. Most Wing Chun people, they lock their stance. They can't move their stance and their hips. They're locked in position. The chest is sunk. The shoulders are rounded and they push out like they're having constipation and they need to, you know, release the bowel movement, right? So unfortunately, it gets a little bit old and ridiculous, right? What has to happen is everything needs to relax. So you push out the hand, the hand comes out with the body together, same time. Or you can lead the hand, and then the body follows. Or you can start with the body first, and then the hand follows. So it could be three different ways when you do the form, right? Not just the hand alone, and no stiffness or tightness, OK? So that's the basic idea behind Tanzo. But in application, Tanzo is, uh, uh, is used as such, right? So given the same ideas as in Paxel and Lapsel, where you have the different anatomical areas, where does the hand wedge, okay? Now, again, Tanso is like a wedge. So sometimes a wedge is like someone's holding the door open for you, or you slip your foot into the door so you can get in. Or the other thing about a wedge is that you might have a little uh, door wedge that holds the door open. So it gets stuck in between the door and the floor. So this is the idea behind Tanzo. If you want to also say Tanzo is like the keel of a boat, yeah, you could say that too, right? Whichever way you want to steer. So uh, as Rafi punches me, okay, if I meet wrist to wrist, that's Tanzo in the classical sense, okay? However, I haven't affected his center of gravity. So my goal really is out here, I have to control hand. So it depends on hand speed, and I have to match him for it, right? But as I get closer and closer to his body, you'll see I, I am going for this uh, perpendicular position so that I need to break his structure and I need to act upon his, uh, his body momentum. So I need to nullify it. So part of that, uh, for just for one second here, Rafi, is when he gives me pressure, I drop into my stance, okay? So if your butt is out, right, and you try to drop into your stance, I'm gonna lose balance because let's say Rafi pushes me, oh, I lost balance. It's because my structural alignment is not right. So that's why Wing Chun keeps the butt in and the hips out and then the knees bent so that when he pushes against me, he pushes me, I just simply absorb it in my leg. Now my legs are locked and loaded, okay? As I like to say, okay? Locked and loaded, it means actually his weight came in and loaded me into my stance. This is the purpose of a stance. The stance is, is the balance between you and your opponent, not just you standing there posing. Okay, looking pretty in the form or anything like that. That's not what uh, stance is for. Stance is for dynamic interplay. He gives me energy, I receive his energy, and I send it to root me, empower me. Yet, when I release, then I send out the same force through my legs into his body so I can direct his, his throw wherever I want to throw him, wherever way I want to project him, right? It doesn't matter, right? So everything is from stance, lock and loaded into the body, okay? Then the body rises up with the stance to issue force, okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's the way Wing Chun is. Wing Chun is not like, you know, shoulder, throwing the arms. It should be one strike, boom, the opponent is down, and that's it, right? Because why? You hit him with the entire body. Well, you know, it's not like the, some of the movies <laughs> where you see uh, a Wing Chun guy fighting 10 or 12 Japanese karate men and beating the hell out of them with a bunch of ruffle punches just with the arm. It's ridiculous. That, that cannot possibly happen. The only way to really do it is, what do you have? You have the whole body in application. I'm linked up. 
right? I've taken your force, absorbed it into my skeletal structure, right? I have good alignment and force, and then from there, I'm able to dispatch my opponent. One, maybe two shots. If you feel you want to be greedy, you could do three, four, five more, right? But you don't have to. Again, one or two is usually enough to, to take care of it, especially if you have good control of the body, right? You can't, well, you need to develop and you need to learn the proper alignment of the body. And this is from the basic training of Wing Chun. Okay, so let's continue on with our Tansa lesson. So first one is against the wrist. He throws a punch on the wrist. Next one is he kind of throws a punch against his bridge. Next one against his, just his elbow. Okay, above or just below his, uh, his elbow crease. Okay, I push my hand here. See, notice again, the perpendicular position, notice the breaking of his structure. He's not able to stand there nicely like the way he would like to stand. I'm pushing him off balance all the time. Right? That's what we call in Wing Chun, Big Ma, pressing horse or pushing horse. Right? So that you use your body to wedge him and knock him about. So Tan Tso is present in everything in Wing Chun. Right? Is present, the energy is present in Pak Tso, the, the energy is present in Lap Tso, and of course in Tan Tso is present too. So the whole thing is spread in, spread his energy, and then scatter his energy so that his energy is not pointing at me, but it's scattered, it's off, offline. All right, so continuing on, all right, at his elbow, you see, again, see how his leg is broken, his structure is broken. And then above his elbow, okay, coming in, okay? And then we have what? The, the shoulder line, okay, just at the shoulder line, right? We could do more, but i give you the idea, right? And of course, Tansel can be on the inside too. So he throws a punch, I can feel it on the inside. I can do on the bridge, on the inside. I can do just uh, below his elbow crease on the inside. I could do at his elbow crease at the inside, so he's broken and split apart, right? I could do it at his biceps and triceps area, right? I could do it just high, closer to his shoulder. So you see how his structure is broken every time, right? The idea is break his structure, right? If you can master these, then you can understand. For example, many times in karate, you have middle block maneuvers, right? It's not quite the same as Wing Chun's Tan Sao. Tan Sao is more like a spread hand stick the hand straight, okay? But in karate, you have strike and then drop the elbow. That's closer to Tanso, right? In a lot of ways, right? So that, but Tanso is still going forward. We have a variation of Tanso we call Tanso, swallowing hand, okay? And this one where you draw energy in. So when Rafi strikes, then I swallow his energy, okay? If he strikes again, I swallow his energy. Right? I'm not pushing him outward, I'm just dropping and swallowing the energy. So those are variations. We also have what we call tiu sao. Tiu sao is jumping hand. So you might see in the form, you do maneuver like this. Okay, so tiu sao is he throws a strike. Then I push him, I pull him, and my hand jumps up right, while I strike him. All right? So I can easily uh, pull his maneuver. I go with his force, and then come in and strike. Okay. So no, none of these are stationary. These are all examples. In reality, Tan Bang and Fuk, and Tan Sao, Lap Sao, and Pak Sao, they're interchangeable, all right? So, uh, and then they're interchangeable with many different striking tools. So don't get it wrong, okay? And what I want to introduce now is variations of these mo maneuvers with different striking. And we'll come back to Pak Sao first. All right, so we're gonna talk about the, the various tools that we use. You see, when we do pak or lap or tan, we call it pak da, da means strike, or lap da means grab and strike, and tan da means tan hand and strike, or spread hand and strike. So the idea behind that is we have so many ways to strike. What do you mean by strike? Strike, we have so many. Yeah, you can strike with the fingers, we can strike with the palm, we can strike with the knuckles. Uh, we can strike with the fist, we can strike with the wrist, uh, the forearm, right, the elbow, the shoulder, uh, the hips, the knees, the pelvis, whatever you want to hit with, the feet, the shin, right, those are ways of striking. So I'm going to show some examples of striking. So pak da first, okay, so pak da first, he comes in, boom, there's the fist, or we could do, boom, the fingers. So if I strike, I will strike his finger with the fingers to his eyes, 
Okay? If I don't do that, then I can do the pump. And then I could just use the pump to smash his face. Or we have various pumps in Wing Chun, the cutting pump. Or we have the low striking pump. We have the yin striking pump. Okay? Striking the groin. It's not nice, right? Don't do this at home, kids. All right? And we have uh, striking with the forearm. Okay? Striking with the forearm. Uh, you hit his carotid arteries. Strike his acupuncture point. He'll knock him right down. Okay? We have uh, striking with the knuckles. So we have the ginger fist in Wing Chun. This is found in the third form. Okay? Here I do a variation of it. So I strike the eyes. I strike the throat. I strike the uh, Adam's apple. I strike the chest different areas with the knuckles, right? We have various other fist methods with the knuckles, like the phoenix eye fist, so we use different areas to strike. This is for pressure point striking and the like, so that we control and hit with it, right? You have to develop these tools to a high level degree of training with sandbags and iron palm liniments and other things like that. But those things are not really important, and just showing you the different examples of it, okay? Then you have Wing Chun straight punch, Right? So you punch this and then pox out, strike. Right? Wing Chun straight punch is with the whole body behind it striking out. Okay? All right? The straight punch is so versatile. I can use pox low. Right? I can strike up to the center. So, and then again, striking high. And then I can strike with uh, various variations of the fist. Hammer fist. Okay? I have back fist, whipping punch. Okay? He comes in, boom! Come in again. Boom, striking, all right? Or I do a hammer fist, all right? And I can also do forearm strike with it, okay? So you have many ways to strike with the fist in Wing Chun, okay? Then we have uh, other strikes with the forearm where maybe I pox out here and then I strike him with the forearm, okay? I use my tonsil to strike him with. Or again, he comes in, I do inside pop and then strike him with the forearm here. Okay, send him flying, right, into the ribcage, okay? I have poxa and elbow strike. So here, I use the elbow strike to strike against his biceps, all right? Or poxa strike to his ribs because he's open already, okay? So then poxa again, using the shoulder, okay? So most of the time you see it in Taiji, but that's in the second form of Wing Chun, all right? Or maybe I do another poxa shoulder here, Striking with the shoulder, all right? Smash with the shoulder, all right? Uh, I can also use striking with the, with the hips. So if I use the hips, I knock him off balance, okay? If I use striking with the knee, I can strike, poxo, poxo, strike with the knee, poxo, strike with the knee, or perhaps poxo and lo ma, where I drop my hand, stance into his knee causing him a uh, tendon injury to the knee. All right, I can do poxo, kick with the shin. I can do poxo, stomp with the foot. Poxo, kick to the groin. Okay, poxo, kick to the knee. Poxo, stomp to the knee. Poxo, kick to the shin. Poxo, again, stomping and striking and whatnot. Okay, so poxo leads the gate very much open. So that's a major core. Maybe one third of Wing Chun is just what I showed you right now. Okay, so let's look at the other two thirds. So we'll talk now about Lop Sao and the striking tools with it that you can combine with it, all right? So every one of the tools that you practice in Wing Chun separately can be added to Lop Sao. You see, in Wing Chun is kind of like a, a matrix or permutation type of system. You know, in the permutation, you have the orders of 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, and then 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, right? And then 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5. That's the idea behind Wing Chun too, right? In fact, that's why Wing Chun only has three forms, and so that you can say, okay, today I'm going to do uh, pox on punch. The next day I'm going to do pox on finger strike. Then I'll do pox on elbow strike. And then pox and knee strike. Okay? So then you can do that with lop cell. Lop cell and finger strike. Lop cell and palm strike. Lop cell and fist strike. Lop cell and so on and so forth. Right? So you understand the permutations. So this is the logic that I use in the presentation today so that once you know my thinking, you know your thinking. You may not be able to train with me personally, but at least you got the idea behind it. Then you can 
and apply this to your own personal art, it makes it very clear. Okay, so let's show some examples of lopsaw and striking. So, okay, so I did lopsaw where I did the basic punch. All right, so I can do lopsaw and then strike through the opponent with my forearm. Okay, I can do lopsaw with finger strike, lopsaw with palm strike. Okay, lopsaw with what? Hmm? Another palm strike, you see? Because I can change the angle of his lop, then I open up different things for me to strike him with, okay? So that's the mastery of it, right? Why? Because you're free. You're no longer stuck in its uh, variations or in the form. Uh, you can see the opening, you come into the opening. It's very simple, okay? So, lopso where I control him here, and then kick him here with the shin. Or lopso where I kick him, round kick, and smash him, right? Or lopso where I knee strike. Or lopso with kick. Maybe I do a double lopso, kick, okay? Or double lopso, and break his knee. Or double lopso, and strike his shin, and stomp his foot, and then come in and strike him again and then choke him and then do whatever I want to do. Okay, all right? Then I could do lapso where I do the fist to the body then coming in with the elbow, okay? Or lapso and then elbow immediately, okay? Lapso and elbow and shoulder break so I get him in joint lock, okay? So many types of lapso, all right? So let's just give you some idea of what we could do with lapso. All right, so the last one is tonsil, the wedge hand. So wedge hand can, can be applied with so many tools as well. So the same ideas I did with pak sao and lap sao, you can apply to tonsil, okay? So it's tan da, right? How do we strike? We can strike tan with the finger, tan with the palm, tan with the fist, tan with the elbow, and so on and so forth, right? So I just want to give you some ideas, and then you can take it and drill it and make it your own, okay? So with Rafi. Again, so he strikes, so tanda is the basic form. Okay, tan's with the finger strike. All right, tan with the palm strike. Again, tan with another palm strike. Another tan with the palm strike. All right, to the ribs. All right, tan with low fist strike. Tan with elbow strike. Okay, tan with another elbow strike. Another tonsil coming in inward and then elbow strike inward. Okay, so it's a different way of doing ton. Okay, here's another ton. He strikes and then I kick him. Okay, tonsil and low kick, tonsil and stomp kick, tonsil and knee strike. Okay, so you have so many variations of tonsil. It's very easy to do. So you understand the 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 matrixing nature of Wing Chun, right? The permutations of Wing Chun that come out very easy. So I hope you take this short uh, video, and study it, practice it, and then apply it. And that will then become yours. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Rafi. Thank you.